Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I talk about every single book on my shelves because I'm hoping it will ease the burden on my soul. Today I am talking about one of my all-time favourite series, The Wayfarers series by Becky Chambers. <laughs> I have to give a quick shout out to Angela who on I think it was my January wrap up was like hey I don't think To Be Taught With Fortunate is part of that series when I was in the middle of editing this video that I had already filmed and I was like oh shoot you are entirely correct that will need to be a separate video I shall refilm. If it sounds like I'm saying things I've already said one time it's because I've already said them one time. A couple of disclaimers before we start I did receive a review copy of the Galaxy in the Ground Within, which isn't actually out yet, which is why it's not here. It will be out by the time you're watching this, but as yet, my pre-order has not come in, so you'll just have to imagine it here. I'm gonna put it in in post. Separate to any review copies received, I have bought copies of all the books myself with my hard-earned cash. Regardless of where they came from, nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. This is also going to be a spoiler-free review. Uh, mostly these books kind of function as standalones, so it would be quite hard to spoil them, but I am going to keep things as spoiler-free as possible. If you want to go in knowing absolutely nothing, I don't think it'll make that much of a difference for you, but if that is what you want to do, click away now and come back when you've read them. I'll put the covers up so you don't have to squint at what's in the background, but the first book in this series, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, published as a result of a Kickstarter campaign in 2015. It was then picked up by a publisher and has since become a really well-known award-winning series. The books in publication order are The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, A Closed and Common Orbit, Record of a Spaceborn Few, and The Galaxy in the Ground Within. Becky Chambers, who is one of the few authors I have had the pleasure and delight of meeting in person, she was absolutely lovely, is a California-based author, she lives there with her wife, and she comes from a very science, space science-focused family, which makes sense with what she now writes. She has a new series starting with Tor, it's a novella series, it is the Monk and Robot series and the first book, the A Psalm for the Wild Built, is out in 2021. This year, very exciting. As you may know, I'm super hyped for it. I will read it the moment it can possibly fall into my grubby palms. Normally I would go into a plot summary here, but that's not really how this series works. I can't say like, at the beginning of the series this happens, and that leads to events in the middle, and that leads to the conclusion. So instead, suffice to say, all of these books take place in the same universe, and I mean that in a very literal sense, in the same universe, and uh, they follow different characters, but often characters that have been referenced or we've actually seen in previous books. So there are key themes that go across all the books. There are a lot about hope, found family, identity, finding your place in the world, that kind of thing. The gay shit. I love all of them dearly. I think if I had to pick a favourite it would be Closed and Common Orbit, but honestly any given day any one of these books could be a favourite. So instead of trying to summarise the plot for each of them, because you can go and look that up yourself, you know, that's fine, I thought I would give you my one sentence, as few words as possible, summary of each book. So I'll, I'll stick the covers up again, again editing Judith, sorry. Found family on this long space road trip. What does it mean to be sentient, but also found family? <laughs> the concept of home and also of humanity. Bottle episode but in space. Friendship. These books are absolutely beautiful. I've mentioned it every time I've talked about them, but every single one of them has made me cry at least twice. While I cry at pretty much everything else, it's quite a lot for a book to make me cry unless the right swirl of hormones is happening to me, but Becky Chambers gets me every single time. What I think is really impressive is she takes these ideas that feel like they will be super unrelatable, like how can I relate to uh, an alien in a intergalactic rest stop? How can I relate to an AI on a planet that I don't even know if it exists or not? And she takes these ideas and you think, no, no, I'm fine. I I'll be fine. And five minutes later, you're sending this photo to your friends of you just sobbing at a book. It's somehow made incredibly relatable and gorgeous and it just works. But one thing I do like about these books is while they do make me cry every single time, they never feel like that's what they're trying to do and they never are trying to do that. You know you read some books and you can hear the author behind the words going, huh, this is the point that everyone will tweet me about because I'm such a meanie. It never feels like that with Becky Chambers, partly because she's not writing particularly major horrific events in that way, but also because that's just not what the books are for. They make you cry because they make you feel things. They don't, they aren't written in order to do that. These books make me cry because they hit home for me and I don't want to put people off if you don't like that kind of book. If you don't like a book that might make you cry for whatever reason. If you're just like, no, that's not for me. Be gone. Get thee behind me, Judith. But I think different people get different things out of them and I have friends who found them good sci-fi but not particularly wow. They're still worth reading even if you're like, I don't want to cry at that, no, that doesn't sound nice. They're still good books. They're quietly, wonderfully hopeful and they acknowledge that sometimes people and institutions and so forth do suck, 
but they are hopeful nonetheless. And also it's showing how things could be better quite often, which I just find Ugh, right at my heartstrings. Another strength of the books is the way they depict alien cultures and use that as kind of like again this speculative lens of how might things be done differently? How can we look at the idea of the nuclear family completely differently? Can we look at a polyamorous relationship? Can we look at more casual relationships? Can we look at queer relationships? Can we look at things that I think a lot of people will be like, I don't understand that. But when you put it in the context of like, this is an alien species, but we're going to relate quite hard to them because they're main characters in the book. And you're going to see that actually the things that we define as normal really aren't. Uh, and it's kind of weird that we do that. And I like the elements of the book where they discuss how weird humans are. It's always a good time. It, it makes it interesting to recommend these books. Uh, I've recommended them to my grandmother recently and she hasn't necessarily told me how it's going. I'm hoping it's a wonderful time for her. But yeah, if you're looking for a book that explores different alien life in a very slice of life way, I think you would enjoy this. I think another pro is that if you don't enjoy one of the books, there is a fairly good chance you will enjoy another, unless what you don't like is the themes and the writing style, because that stays fairly consistent. But if, you're, if you don't get on with the characters or if you don't get on with the broad plot, there might be another book that you really enjoy. For instance, if you were really not here for a long way to a small angry planet because you didn't get on with the main characters and you just thought like I don't care about these people those characters don't really show up again so you're pretty bound to have at least a different experience reading a different book in the series. I vaguely touched on it but these books are super queer that they're, they're wonderful for that I think the reason that so many people who like them and like those found family tropes uh would 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 get behind a rainbow flag uh <laughs> I'm completely calling myself out here but it's it's very telling that these books are written with that in mind and I think it's really powerful and interesting. And I think it's just really nice to see yourself represented in a book in a really casual and this is perfectly normal kind of way, which these books do really well. I'd normally have cons here. Uh, I'm not going to include any because I think these books are wonderful and everyone should read them. As I say, I have had friends who haven't liked them. Uh, one of them just didn't, didn't get on with them as much, still really enjoyed them, but was like, these aren't the best things since sliced bread, perfectly valid. Another was saying, they were quite burned out on the whole idea of found family and were just sort of like, I don't, I don't need that. I have no idea if they read beyond book one though. But instead of talking about cons, I thought I'd touch on reading order because I think that's an interesting thing to explore. In this case, it kind of doesn't matter where you start. You will still have a good time reading it. I personally think the best order to read in is publication order because that, that makes most sense to me and that's how I first read them. But I think that you could go anywhere. I would recommend reading a long way to a small angry planet before you read Closed in Common Orbit because I think it's more powerful that way. But the choice is yours, I'm not going to dictate it to you, that's just my recommendation. It is a finished series, the series ended with the galaxy and the ground within, so if you did want to devour this series all in one go there would be no waiting for the next one. That would be good, I don't know if that's something people like to consider when picking up a series, I know I do, I don't like to start a series that I know I'm going to have to wait for ages for the next one. I do it all the time, but that doesn't mean I enjoy it. Still waiting for Rook and the Rose too. Ugh. I find it really hard to think of comparisons for Becky Chambers books. I think it is well worth checking out Escape Pod, the podcast and the short story collection. I will put my review to the collection up so you can hear a bit more about that. But in terms of discovering new authors, I think that's really good. Upright Women Wanted is not necessarily sci-fi, it's more dystopian, but it has a similar slice of life element to it and also is very feminist which I enjoy. It's a lot darker but definitely worth reading. And I also wondered about Unconquerable Sun but this is mostly just me pulling from the depths of my sci-fi recommendations. I am growing the list, I am, I will have more on my sci-fi recommendations list by the end of the year, I promise. My final thoughts in case you were wondering are that you should absolutely read this series. I think it's wonderful from start to finish, they have oodles of rereadability every single time I read them, I enjoy them, uh, I've never felt ugh I just have to get through this one because I want to reread the other ones. I think that reading the whole series gives you a really good feel for this world that Becky Chambers has created and even though there are four very distinct books they still feel hugely interconnected when you read them as a whole. I just think it's all around wonderful and as I say I'm so excited for everything Becky Chambers is going to do next. Comment below with some sci-fi recommendations, I'm always willing to grow that list even more than it already is. I'm looking at my TBR now and I'm wondering what I will have read by the time this video is going up. Very exciting. While you're down there commenting please do follow me on all of my social media and subscribe, it makes me feel loved and appreciated. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. This is the wrong memory card already, I messed up but you know shuffle the boys along and hope for the best. Welcome back to Overbooked, I'm Judith. What am I doing? The first book with a galaxy in the ground, the galaxy.